All right, so the first thing we are going to do is uh, going through the project and see what the project uh, wants us to do. <laughs> Hello, everyone. All right, so um, uh, let's take a look at it, what we are going to do. So for the milestone two of the project, now that the, 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 bone, the, the main structure of the project is done, what we are going to do is uh, design uh, the basic class that we need for um, for error handling of the system and to do that let me just click on it instead of scrolling down like that click on milestone 2 and jump to it that's going to be easier there you go so the very first thing that we need to do we need to have some place uh, in our project to have all the constant values that we need and add it to it so any place we need it uh, we can actually use those values and we call that pos.header file so that's essentially the header file of the whole point of sale system any constant values that you need to have or definitions that you need to have carried around your system you can put it in that header file and uh, and add it. These six values are what we need initially to be able to start to work. And obviously, as the time passes, you can uh, uh, add anything you want to it. Remember, the project is extremely open-ended. You can add any functionality, anything that you want to the project, as long as you satisfy the specific functions that we ask you to, to give us. Um, so that's what it's going to be. Um, um, Aaron, um, y you, uh, I just noticed that the only person who said that um, I, I was looking at the poll and I noticed that you said you cannot hear me. Is this still the case? Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Because uh, the reply was no, do I? Can you hear me? So that's that. So. Um, so yeah, so uh, that's uh, what we are going to have. Uh, so the point of sale uh, header file is the first thing that you are going to create. The next class that we have that you are going to create is what we call it an error class. The error class is what the class that is going to handle the error state of classes so essentially we are creating a kind of a, a flag a smart flag it's not a smart flag it's a it's a flag for um, the state of an object that also carries the error message too so i don't have to set a flag and then have an error message so what i do i put the i encapsulate the whole error situation inside a class therefore you by creating this class you have a flag and at the same time you have the uh, you have the message of what went wrong so uh, this class only has one um, this class only has one attribute in it that is uh, uh, a character pointer which holds uh, an error message dynamically so uh, basically if this error message is null if this pointer is null it means there is no error and um, the state of the error is false which means there is no error um, and if this pointer is not null which means it's pointing actually to a statement some kind of an error message it means we are in an error like the error message is true which means the error is in an erroneous state and uh, what went wrong is the content of that uh, string. So this is the design of the error class. Are, are we okay with this? So how this class is going to work, it's gonna actually make our life much easier. So whenever something goes wrong, we set the class to the error message and from the state of the class, we can find out if the if the class is in a good state or in a bad state. So the construction of the error is very simple. If by default, when you create it, it is in an empty state, which is in a good state for, for uh, error class. So the empty state of error class, it means the, er the, the, the class um, is in a no error state. Um, 
I can't, you cannot call it good or bad. It depends on what you want to do. But, but it, yeah, so the error class is in a, um, is in a no error state. So uh, you also you can create a class by passing a C string into it. So as soon as you set the as you create the class, you that you dynamically allocate the memory and you copy the C string to it. And because now the class contains an error message, it is in an uh, erroneous state. Obviously, because we have dynamic memory allocation, we need to do the rule of three for this. And the rule of three for this is to copying. Uh, is the copying and a copy assignment is allowed, which means you have to implement them. You cannot delete those things, uh, delete those uh, properties, uh, those uh, uh, functionalities, and you have to implement them. So an error can be set to an to another error and uh, copy copied. And uh, when uh, the error goes out of state, we make sure that uh, no memory leak is going to uh, happen. Are we okay with this? <laughs> Aiden, are you with us? Aiden, are you with us? Aiden Jing? Okay. I guess he's just online and not here. All right. If you're anywhere at school, actually, uh, the, how many of you, like um, those people who are at school right there, can you raise your hand? That's it? The rest are not at school? Okay. Oh, good. All right. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, so so that's rule of three. Now, uh, what mandatory operations we need to have for the error, okay? The very first thing is that we need to be able to set the error to something. Therefore, the, an assignment operator should be overloaded with a C string. So if you set an error object to a C string, it's it sets the, uh, the content of the error message. So um, it it does the normal thing which means first it wipes out the if the it it wipes out the current da, uh, dynamic memory allocation reallocates to the size copies the information the whole shebang that we have all is done so the assignment operator should work for the error string uh, for the error message that's number one and if you assign the error message to an empty string then you have to nullify the thing so if it's uh, either null or empty and make sure that uh, you don't allocate uh, an empty string. You you nullify the error message. What I mean by nullify is that if error, so essentially if I mentioned that if we need to talk about anything uh, in the project, we are going to create uh, an overview thing in it so that's this is the case now so uh, let me just create it I'm gonna pause the recording while this the thing is getting created so when we are talking about the um, the the error state what I mean is that if I have the class error I have say uh, this is the class error Okay, so what I have is that if you create, it uh, doesn't matter, just, I'm just going to create a default constructor for it. Um, so uh, what happens is that, what I'm saying is that when, when I create an error, so ERR I have, if you set error to null PTR, this should uh, this should uh, set the error to a no error state, which means the uh, the pointer inside the error, the the character pointer that you have, 
So this is a message, whatever you call it, I don't know. This should be null, should become null. This will set the error message to be null. Not only that, even if you write error is set to that, this is not a null pointer. This is essentially a one uh, element argument, a one, one, um, uh, an array with size of one that the first one is null. So if you do like this, it, sh it looks like message is not null so it but it's empty therefore it's going to be problem so even this should set um, the m message to null ptr and deallocate so an empty string in this case is not to be actually allocated as an empty string it will be converted to a null pointer so in here m message should be null ptr okay uh, are we okay with this? Okay, so this is going to be uh, overloading the assignment operator for error. So, and obviously, if I if I write over here ERR, for example. Uh, I don't know, invalid date. Now the error message is is in a in a so this is an output here and and to a no error state. And this one will be in an error state. Yes, Jack, go ahead. Uh, just confirming that no pointer passes as a string. You're talking about this one? Yeah. So because uh, you are overloading, so essentially when you're overloading the operator, the operator is going to be something like uh, um, error reference operator uh, constant character pointer message, right? Yep. So when null pointer is passed, then message is null. That's easy because this is null. You know you have to make this null, correct? Okay, correct. Yeah. But when you are setting it to this one, then it's not null anymore. It's an empty string. It's an uh, it's a C string with length of zero. This okay. is no string. This is a C string with length of zero. My uh, requirement is that either of these two should result m, m message to be null so you should okay. check the length of the message if the message is not null you should check its length to see if it's zero if it's zero you should treat it as null gotcha and they can both, both be passed to the same uh prototype yeah of course because null ptr okay. is a pointer right okay perfect all right Thank and you. this one obviously is uh setting it to the same message thing, and, yeah. yeah okay cheers Okay, perfect. All right, so that's that. So, so that's that one. And obviously, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave these uh, in it. it uh, leave this project in there so you can see exactly what we are talking about. <coughs> um, so, and the other thing is Boolean type conversion. So, uh, you need to um, uh, overload the casting to a Boolean. If error is to be casted to a Boolean it should return true if the message is not null, which means it says, I am true. I am truly an error. And if the if it's false, it means there is no error. So that's what an error is going to do. That's what the Boolean conversion is going to do. Are we okay with this? Clear works like clear for C in and C out. Like when you clear, it clears the state of the um, of the uh, uh, wait a minute. This one clears the message returns everything. This should be in a no error state. That's wrong actually. This should be an error state. After you clear it, it should be in an error state, not no error state. Um, there is an error, there is no error, correct. So if you clear, yes, so clearing an error, so I have to fix this. So this is a problem over here. So let's go over here. 
no error. The error class clears the message, returns the reference of the current error object, clears the message. After this, the error message should be in an error state because um, uh, it's an error state with the message pointer set to null, PTR. So let's see if it's correct. This method clears the error message and returns the reference of the current error object. After this, the error object should be in an error state with the message pointer set to null PTR. Yes. Um, wait a minute. It's uh, no, no error state. Whoa, I'm, I'm, I'm confusing myself. So it is no error. So it means it is no error. No, I made the mistake. It is no error. Error subject should be in a no error state because set to null. The message with the message set to null. I was thinking about something else. So it clears the error message, returns the yada yada yada. After this error message should error message should be in a no error state with message set to yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So uh, <clears throat> yeah. So when you're so essentially clearing means deallocating the uh, the the dynamic memory of the error uh, of the error message and setting it to null PTR. As simple as that. Um, after that, so this is the second method that you have. Then uh, the the O stream insertion helper. Uh, is what you need to do, which means when oh, um, the error message is, first of all, are we okay with the clear? Because I just confused myself for a second and probably everybody else. Are we okay with the clear of the error message? All right. All right. So uh, next thing is the O stream insertion, which means if you print the error like if you can you should be able to do something like this I should be able to say see out error and L I should be able to do this and doing this will actually print the error message <clears throat> whatever inside so if error was it so if it is here it should print this should print invalid date okay and in this case it should print nothing okay so this one's not gonna uh, uh, print any uh, it's, it's just uh, print nothing I'm gonna say only new line but in here it's gonna be invalid thing and new line that's what's gonna get printed so <clears throat> that's uh, um, the overloading of the O stream. Are we okay with this? All right, but be aware that uh, you are not supposed to use friend to implement this. That's why we are not telling you what to create or not create. It's your your responsibility to have this without the O stream being a friend. If that's a friend, uh, I don't know what, uh, if other people are listening to this, I don't know what their professor do, but for me, that's an absolute rejection. You do something like that, I won't accept it. I do not accept any type of method friendship in my, any, any type of function friendship in my uh, projects. Just uh, remember that. Uh, your professor may have different strategy, but um, if you are my student, don't do that. Are we clear on this? Are we okay with this? Okay, so other methods and operation implement and add any other method or operation you find necessary to accomplish the above tasks. Make them private if they don't need to be publicly accessible. So have all these things. Uh, so anything you want to add to any of the classes throughout the project, you can and should do actually because, uh, for example, in here when I'm asking you to overload this, you cannot do this without an accessor functions to access the uh, the data of the error. So 
um, be aware. So that's the error. So now that we have the, that our flag, we can actually start the date class. So date class uh, encapsulates uh, uh, date and time, not only date, year, month, day, uh, hour, and minutes. Um, you can set the date message to only uh, display and get the, the date and not the time. But if you do not set it to date only, then it will have date and time. Okay, so because of that, you need f five integers over there for year, month, day, hour, and minute. Uh, and also, um, uh, so uh, encapsulates the area, 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 date also has a flag, date only. Uh, and so that's the flag that you're going to have, a Boolean thingy that you're going to have over there to, to remember if the date is supposed to be date only or not. And obviously, we need an error attribute. So you're going to have... Uh, uh, an instance of the error func error error class that you created as an attribute of the of the date and use that one for your flag. So if anything goes wrong with your date, you set the error message to something and you stop processing everything else, and then your date will be in an error state and you can uh, know exactly what the error was by displaying the error message. Uh, are we okay with the attributes of the date? <laughs> So what is the validation process with the date? So when you are doing validation, when you are actually setting the values of the date, okay, setting the values of the date, I'm not talking about reading it from the keyboard. So when you are setting these values of the date, date and time, you, you don't error check one by one. You set everything. So all the values that you have for date, time, um, sorry, for a year, month, day, hour, and uh, minute, you set them all. After you set everything, then you validate them. And you validate with the order of uh, year, month, day, hour, and minute. And if any of them is invalid, you stop right there and set the error message and don't do the validation anymore. So I might have three different values that are invalid but error message is set to the first encounter of an error uh, of the erroneous value inside the the date are we okay with this but when you are reading from the keyboard obviously it's different when you are reading from the keyboard the value that you are receiving is not the only thing so so you don't check the validity of the year if you actually read an integer so if somebody instead of 2023 enters 55 for a year reading that integer is success so there is no error message uh, no error is set because first you have to set everything but if they enter something garbage and the uh, ice stream fails and hangs right over there that's another type of thing. So if that's the case, then every single... So if the user enters values that are not readable, it's not that it reads and it's invalid. It's not readable. Then you set the error message just then and there and you forget about the rest of the stuff. So uh, validity happens in two different ways. Uh, setting integer values to integers and check them for validity happens only once after everything is set but uh, reading the values from the entry for iStream and the success of reading an integer happens one by one anyways let's go through it so date values <coughs> varied range of values of year defined so when you are actually setting the <coughs> the values the range of the values are set up here, so so you have them in here, so you know exactly what is the, what are the minimum and maximum values for the year when you are actually validating them. <clears throat> and for month, it's going to be between 1 and 12. And for day, it's going to be between 1 and days of month. Days of month change depending on what year is based on the leap year. So we have a function for it. We're going to go to that one. So when you are actually testing to see if the days of the month is correct or not um, 
you have to call a function and see what is the date of the month based of the year so you're going to say year 2023 month four tell me what is the number of days and that function is going to tell you that we'll come to it later for time values we have 0 to 23 for uh, hour and 0 to 59 for uh, four minutes and validation sequence as I mentioned happens like this so <clears throat> uh, uh, as soon as the validation fails the error object is set and the rest of the validation uh, uh, will not take place so if, for example if the day is invalid then you're not going to check hour and minute if a year is invalid you're not going to check the rest so uh, to do all the things with date uh, there are some complicated parts that I didn't want you to waste your time with it that's why I gave you the logic for them you have two choices either you can put these functions as helper functions inside your utility um, uh, module and use them or you can copy the logic and convert them to to private methods and put it in the date it's your choice how you want to implement this but here you go these are the values <clears throat> the first one <clears throat> when we create a date by default the date should be set to the current date of the system whatever your computer or matrix is and whatever the date and time is it should be set to that if it's if it is not assigned to anything if that's the case you need this function to set it up and this function that gets system date receive references of year month day hour and minute and a boolean for date only <clears throat> and it sets these values based on uh, based on the date only flag so um, when you call this function it actually accesses the date and time of the system and sets the date month and a year as you see and if date only is true then it's going to set the hour and minute to zero and if date only is false it's going to set it to the hour and minute of the system so you can use this in your program if you want to are we okay with this excuse me can i ask go ahead please um so uh in each function we need to use the library of c c time right so we allow to use it right that's yes that's time header file yeah c time yeah that's yeah. why i added these two things because if you don't have these two things this won't compile thank you so thank if you. you're putting in a utility it should be included in your utility if you're putting it in your date.h and you're converting this to a method then you have to put this in your date uh, date.cpp yes thank you jack you had a question Sorry, accidentally pressed hand up. Oh, no problem. All right. So <clears throat> another thing is comparison of the dates. So if you want to check two dates and see if they are one is bigger than the other one, it's a nasty if else statement that you have to write the big one. So I came up with this function that makes it easier to compare the value of two dates. So what I did, I created uh, a function that returns a unique integer value that you can tie your date to it so from the date and time that you have in your date it gives you uh, an integer value that is unique for that date so if you have two dates and you pass the values inside the function the one that has a bigger integer value is a later date the one that has a smaller integer value is an earlier date and if the value the integer values that come out are equal then the two dates are the two dates are identical to the two date and time so you can use this for comparison if you uh, want to compare two dates this function is your friend are we okay with this like this you don't have to write a nested if statement to check the date right and stuff all right now number of days and in, in months um, when this is not a leap year it, the values if it's january is 31 march is 31 uh, and it keeps going april and it keeps going like that so all, but all the values over here refer exactly to the month of uh, uh, the year but uh, february is the one that is iffy because it's 29 year days or 28 days depending on the leap year value 
So what I did, I wrote this function to uh, receive a year and receive a month and based on the year and month gives you the correct value for the month. So when you are validating your, your month, first you set the date, then using the year and the, as first you set the year, then using the year and month, you can actually see what the date is, what the value that it returns is, and that's the maximum value you can have, and therefore you can validate the days of the month. So that's another helpful function for you. Again, if you want to use this, uh, um, either put it in utils or add it as a uh, private method to your date class. Are we okay with this? Okay, so construction of the date is happening. The construction of the date is happening by default to set the date to the uh, system's date. And a date can be created receiving the values that you have. So either it's gonna be year, month, and day. So that's one constructor, which obviously it sets it to date only, or it receives five values, year, month, day, hour, and minute, which will set the system to, uh, to uh, sets the date to a uh, not date, uh, only mode um, and creates it that way. So that's the construction. You should overload all the comparison operators so the two dates can be compared in any way we want and those are the the operator overloads for it. Uh, you uh, need to have a date only modifier method which essentially sets the date to date only. So if date only receives, so it receives a Boolean essentially, and if the value is true, if first it will set date and month to zero, and then it will set the date only flag to true. If the, fla if the value that it receives is false, it just say it sets the, the date only attribute to false, and that's that. Um, my apologies, I have to pause for a second. and. Need Uh, yeah, and by the way, uh, uh, the next day that you're coming in, we might have guests. I may have to bring my daughter to school, so if she's going to be in class, please be nice to her. Uh, anyway, so let's continue. Um, uh, uh, date only modifier, as we said. So if the date only is set to false, we said we just set the date only flag to false. We don't do anything. But if the value that is received is true, then... Uh, the story is different in that case. If it's true, you have to set the date and hour to zero and then set the flag to true. Are we okay with this? All right. Also, uh, one thing I need to mention, uh, any question about the midterm result and things like that, please uh, see me uh, Wednesday afternoon. Before Wednesday afternoon, I am not going to answer anything because I'm m constantly marking and talking to students is going to um, completely take me off the, off the, thing, off the um, um, tight schedule that I have to finish the marking. So any questions about marking? Please uh, after the uh, uh, after the study break. Uh, sorry, after the uh, uh, Wednesday after Wednesday noon. Wednesday noon till noon. I'm marking. All right. So uh, so the Boolean conversion operator for the error message it obviously returns uh, true if uh, it is in an error state, which means if the message is not null and it returns false if uh, the message is false, uh, is not. So, um, it tell, so it's, uh, it is, uh, error is true when there is an error. Very simple and straightforward. Then you, uh, you're gonna have an error query, which essentially is a, fu uh, this function error, uh, re uh, it's a constant function, and returns a constant reference of the entire error object out in case somebody wants to copy the error or they want to um, um, have the error object to wor work with it, it returns a constant reference of the error flag of the date. Uh, are we okay down to this point? All right. 
and any other error message as usual I keep writing this after every single thing that I have so any other er operation anything you want to add to that to, to, to the error message be my guest you can do it there is no, no uh, um, restriction on it as long as you satisfy all the things that we have so the old stream insertion operator it's exactly the same thing that we that we that I mentioned um, uh, like uh, so uh, what happens is that when you are uh, printing a, a date uh, uh, into the uh, C out if uh, the date is valid and it's not in an error state if it's date only you only print it in this format year month and day if uh, uh, it is not in date only mode you print the whole thing like that so this is the format of the date that is getting printed and if it is in an error state um, you still print these two things but before these you're going to print the error message which means you so uh, so so if there is something wrong with the, the with the with the year with the date first you print an error message then you print this value inside parentheses in front of it an example is down here so this is a, a correct day uh, date only value and that's printed like that this is a correct um, date and time value which is like that this is an incorrect date and time with time being set to 26 which is more than 23 so what happens is that obviously because that's the case when it's validated the uh, the error object is set to invalid hour so first you're going to print invalid hour then an open parentheses then you print all the values over here wrong incorrect correct it doesn't matter and then you close it so you say invalid hour and you print it and we'll see invalid hours here obviously you see that the minute is invalid too but because our uh, business logic tells us that we stop at the very first encounter of an error this is what happens and again make sure that you don't use friendship to do this are we okay with this The extraction operator reads the the extraction operator reads the date and time with the exact same format that is printed, but it doesn't care if the delimiters over here are exactly these values. So it reads an integer, skips one character, reads another integer, skips one character, reads another integer, skips one character, reads another integer, skips one character, and reads another integer. So it reads one by one like that it doesn't matter if I write it like this it is still a successful read if I do it like this it is still a successful read so all these reads are successful but of course the validation happens afterwards um, uh, are we okay with this all right so uh, so this is uh, after uh, when all the readings are successful you do the validation but if somebody enters something incorrectly over here for example so um, so let me just write an example over here right after this uh, so if i have something like let me just go edit So, for example, I'm gonna I'm gonna write an example over here. So I'm gonna say over here, uh, example. Um, for example, if the data entry, so I'm gonna say if the data entry for reading a date is like this so a user enters for example 2023 um, 10 and in here it enters ABC and comma um, 20 and something like that if if user enters like something like this obviously C in fails at this state okay if that is the case then the error message will be set to cannot read day entry so when the values are being read like this so the error message the error message should be set to
cannot read day entry and uh, extraction extraction is stopped having ice stream left in error state okay so when uh, when you actually are reading when you actually are reading the the date as you are reading the date is if halfway through reading the date it fails Didn't they just add that? I'm kind of confused. I think I just added that thing over here, didn't I? Let me take a look at it one more time. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, so when you are reading, so this one is an integer. You read, you skip, you read, you skip. You read and you can't because you can't see and is going to fail or ice stream is going to fail. And when ice stream fails, you immediately set the error message to cannot read day entry and you stop. You, you're done. Nothing's going to be read anymore. And you leave ice stream in a failure state. So later on, they can uh, do whatever they want to do with it. Okay, note if they is read only more after reading the three integers, set hour and minute to zero. So yeah, so if uh, if you are reading the values, if it's in date date only, obviously you're not gonna read hour and minute and you set it to, to zero. Are we okay with this? All right, and uh, because all the, there are lots of testing needs to, that needs to be done for this, I wrote it in separate uh, CPP files so you can run them one by one and compare the output to see exactly if the output is uh, done properly or not and uh, that's gonna take care of all the uh, all the um, yeah, what should we call it all the uh, things you want to uh, make sure it will work properly uh, the first one is an error tester, then the constant values in the pos.h, a co date constructor, the logical operators, and the date validation. And after this, when you're actually submitting, I put all these things in one file called main. So you, you, um, you do the submission in one shot. Um, and the submission is um, the, the usual that we have. Okay. Uh, any questions about uh, milestone two? She, go ahead. Ta uh, she Tang, you you said that you have a question. Yes. Please, so you can con you can start talking. Oh, I pressed the okay. wrong oh. button. Oh, wrong uh, button. I, have, I did have a question. <laughs> you don't have a question. Okay, that's fine. All right. Yeah, I, I did. You do have a question? Go ahead. So if the code is already on the um, assignment uh, on this, do I still need to um, uh, uh, reference is your code? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, thank you for asking. All the code that you see over here, the codes that you see over here, it should be, yeah. it should be cited. Yeah, everything should be cited. I need to cite it. It's... Yeah, yeah, everything needs to be oh, cited. Okay, okay. So the citation happens for everything. So you're going to have citation on these. But so, so separate, it's easier to separate your citation in two, two separate ones. So when you're doing citation and you're going to, you're going to say over here, uh, like, um, something like subject uh, or or uh, code uh, by by professor or code uh, given by the assignment then you cite it if the code that you have received is from some place that uh, that uh, is not from the uh, from the uh, source that we have i don't know you didn't know how to do something you got it from chat gpt or something if that's the case then you cite it that way so you're going to say this part of the code is not written by me and yada 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 but uh, so, so, so it can be easily separated. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank okay, you. Thank you. 
Uh, any other question? Yes, you don't need to raise your hand. Just activate your microphone and talk. Uh, yeah, I saw Workshop 7 mm -hmm. has been released yes. uh, like a day ago. And uh -huh. the due date is still still intact? Or Yeah, yeah, I'll fix the due date. For our, our due dates are always... Actually, no, the due date is what? The due date is... Uh, the original due date is 16th. Is, is it 16th? Yeah, the due date is on 16th. Oh, so, so I'll, I'll fix it and, I'll, and I'm going to postpone it a little go back, like for a day or two. Yeah. Right. But but half of the code is given to you, so you're just writing two small classes. Put half an hour on it and be done. It's very simple. So we gave you the base. So to, because it was released late, we gave you the, the, the base class. So the base class is written for you. You're just writing the derived classes. So it's very simple. Okay? So don't think it's like a big thingy that you had always. It's just uh, kids play. You can do it very quickly. Uh, but uh, it will be. Uh, I'll set up the the due dates. I'll give you some uh, some more time to do it. Anyone else? Any question? All right. Okay. So uh, now we can be done with this and start doing our. Uh, our uh, lecture for today so all right let's stop this